Hello, I am Aldo and I will present to you our work on packing reward shaping, understanding the benefits of reward engineering on sample complexity. Reinforcement learning is a powerful paradigm for learning complex behaviors purely through trial and error interaction with an environment. It has been shown to be effective on a variety of domains, ranging from games like Dota and Atari to character control and even robotics. Let us try to understand what makes RL work and what can make it difficult. The predominant challenge in reinforcement learning is in exploration. In high dimensional state and action spaces, effectively exploring the environment to minimize reward can be challenging, especially with large state spaces and long horizons. This problem is particularly exacerbated in situations where the space must be explored effectively in order to even experience a reward. In a large state space, exploration seems exponentially hard. And yet, RL is able to solve extremely complex tasks as those that are shown here. What makes it actually work? So the key element that makes many modern deep reinforcement learning systems work is a copious amount of reward shaping where a detailed reward function is constructed of many elements weighted with hand-tuned weightings. For instance, in the game of Dota, while the eventual reward function is just whether the game is won or not, a detailed shaped reward function is constructed with elements of death, of different characters, whether gold is spent, when hits are made, and so on. These shaped reward functions are crucial in actually training these agents to learn complex tasks successfully. Similarly, for the task of rotating a cube with a robotic hand, there are a number of terms combining rotation, position, action penalties, joint velocity, and so on. Importantly, for both of these domains, the sign of this reward function uses considerable domain expertise and problem knowledge to make the problem easier. Intuitively, these shape reward functions are, are easier to experience, providing learning signals throughout the process rather than only a task completion, like for example, a sparse reward would. In order to better design and utilize these types of reward shaping, we need to think about how reward shaping actually affects exploration and sample complexity. So what do we know about reward design? Perhaps the most well-known results about reward shaping has to do with potential based reward shaping as suggested by Andrew and and other people. This reward shaping has shown to ensure policy invariance, but only showed empirical results on some domains regarding sample complexity. Moreover, in practice, many design reward functions are not even potentials based. So to better understand the role of reward shaping in learning, we need to develop a framework to analyze the impact of different shapings on sample complexity. So this is actually the key question that we ask in this paper. Can we provide a formal characterization of the sample complexity benefits of using shaped rewards. So the goal of this paper is not so much to provide a method as it is to provide a framework for analysis of the impact of shaping in learning. However, without more assumptions, this space is way too large to characterize directly. Instead, we need to think about what are the right assumptions for analyzing shaping in reinforcement learning. That is both easy and can aid in learning. So to answer this question, let us think about what we would consider to be a good reward shaping. So if for instance, we were given access to the optimal value function V star, that would serve as a good source of reward shaping since an agent could follow V star greedily without excessively exploring or going down unnecessary suboptimal paths. So however, if we know V star, the problem would already be solved. So although it is impractical to assume that V star is known, an approximate version of it may actually be available. So what remains to introduce is a reasonable set of assumptions for this value function estimator. So for simplicity, we assume V tilde satisfies the following upper bound that is shown on screen. Uh, this is where uh, that there exists a scaling factor parameter beta such that V star is upper bounded by beta V tilde or all states in the state space. 
So this sandwich property is a reasonable condition that may arise in many plausible forms of V tilde estimators. So for example, when the candidate V tilde is computed in a simulation environment, or when we use a heuristic, the Euclidean distance, such as the Euclidean distance between the current state and the goal in a grid world environment. So let's delve into how we can incorporate knowledge of V tilde into existing reinforcement learning algorithms. We will use the UCBBI algorithm as our template for policy optimization. UCBBI relies on building optimistic estimators Q hat of the optimal Q function Q star. UCBBI shaped is a simple modification of the basic UCBBI algorithm where the estimated value functions are clipped to the beta V tilde upper bounds implied by the given value function estimate and the exploration bonus terms are proportional to the maximum value of V tilde instead of H. An important observation is that the clipped V hat functions are all optimistic. That is, they satisfy V hat T of S is at least as large as V star of S for all states S. Similarly, the Q functions computed by UCBBI shaped are also optimistic. We will show this simple clipping mechanism can reduce the sample complexity of UCBBI shaped versus that of unclipped UCBBI in two ways. First, the clipping modification reduces the size of the effective state space. And second, the V tilde exploration bonus reduces UCBBI shaped horizon dependence. We will measure the performance of our algorithms using a quantity known as regret. This measures the cumulative performance between different difference between the optimal policy and the policies produced by our algorithm at each step. Our main result characterizes the complexity of UCBBI shape. We show that we have probability the regret of UCBBI shape scales as the regret of UCBBI, where the state dependence scales not with the size of the original state space, but with the size of an effective state space. Similarly, we can trade off some H factors in the horizon dependence of unshaped UCBVI with factors scaling with V tilde instead. We proceed to outline a brief, a very brief proof sketch of our main results. We start with the standard regret decomposition that bounds the regret of any algorithm by the expected sum of bonuses under the sampling distribution. From this decomposition, it is easy to see that by defining the shape bonus terms to scale with V tilde instead of H, we can derive an upper bound that trades up some factors of H with factors of V tilde. Let's proceed to show a sketch on how to prove UCBBI shaped achieves a reduced state dependence in its regret rate. We start by defining an auxiliary Q tilde object. This is the expected value of the Bellman operator if beta times V tilde was used as a legitimate value function. A key observation is to note that for any state S, if V star of S is larger than Q tilde of S A, then action A is suboptimal. Assuming the gap between V star of S and Q tilde of S A is at least delta, we define the set of state action pairs that satisfy this property as pseudo sub delta. This corresponds to the green and yellow regions in the diagram, and by definition are disjoint from the state action pairs in the support of the optimal policy. The optimism of the UCBBI shaped Q functions ensures any suboptimal state action pair in set of sub delta is at most visited approximately one over delta square times. States in the boundary pseudo sub delta, which is the yellow region, are those state action pairs in pseudo sub, the yellow and the green regions, that need to be traversed to reach all state action pairs in pseudo sub. And finally, states in path pseudo sub delta are those that can only be reached by visiting a state action pair in pseudo sub delta. By definition, and as the diagram indicates, path pseudo sub delta state action pairs can only be accessed through boundary pseudo sub states. So combining these observations, 
we can include that all state action pairs in pseudo sub delta and path pseudo sub delta will not be visited anymore after each state in boundary pseudo sub delta is visited properly one over delta squared times. So this is why the state dependence of our final bounds will scale with a term that will depend on s minus at least path pseudo sub delta. And thus we finish our theoretical results. So we evaluate our methods in three grid world environments. The first one is a simple square grid where the agent is tasked with going from the bottom right corner to the top left corner. The middle one is a single curved corridor and the third is a bidirectional corridor. In this experiment, we showcase the performance of UCBBI shaped for different values of beta in each of the environments we showed in the previous slide. In each of these plots, we compare UCBBI versus UCBBI shaped and UCBBI with only shaped bonuses and only clipped value functions. In both the open grid world and the double corridor environments, where knowledge of an approximate value function can help prune the state space, UCBBI shaped provides substantial gains with respect to these baselines. The performance of UCBBI shaped in the single corridor environment depends on the input value of beta used. And we observe that a low beta value worked better than a more conservative form of it. The performance of UCBBI shape thus is, is sensitive to the value of beta used. Selecting a correct value that accurately induces a sufficiently good pruning strategy is crucial for successful empirical results. And so in order to explain, to expand on this, we run UCBBI shape with many different values of beta in the single and double corridor environments. And so we observe that in the easy to shape double corridor environment, the performance of UCBBI shape is very robust to the choice of beta, while in the single corridor environment, it is somewhat sensitive to it. So to alleviate this unknown beta issue, we propose the use of an online mall selection meta algorithm for choosing the best beta. This algorithm uses the collected reward of its online deployment strategy to guide its selection for this beta parameter. This is a very simple strategy that can be placed on top of the original algorithm and can compete against the best beta chosen in hindsight. So in summary, we hope this presentation can convince the audience that reward shaping can decrease the algorithm's sample complexity by reducing its horizon and state space size dependence. And you can all find the paper in this archive link. And we hope to see you on our poster. Thank you.